A subsonic, all-weather, multi-mission aircraft with anti-submarine capabilities was required by the U.S. Navy in the mid-1960s. Originally intended for use in battle against the Soviet Union during the Cold War, the Lockheed Martin S-3 fighter has now developed into a multi-purpose device. The mission of scout aircraft was redefined when it achieved its unparalleled range, enabling it to detect and destroy targets that were distant from its fleet. With nearly 200 Whiskey-class and 35 Zulu-class submarines posing a serious danger to the U.S. Navy, the Soviet Union possessed the biggest submarine force in the world during World War II. Their hunter-killer duo were starting to lose control, even with their remarkable technology. The United States Navy required a plane that could both hunt and kill enemy submarines and protect the American fleet. With destroyers and weaponry on par with the West, the Soviet surface fleet had increased dramatically in the 1960s. Replaced by a carrier-based anti-submarine aircraft with a piston engine tracker, the U.S. Navy issued the VSX requirement. Requests for bids, including the YS-3A Lockheed model, were sent to Lockheed and Convair Grumman. Though Ling Temko Vought was part of Lockheed's team, the company lacked experience in building carrier-based aircraft. The landing gear, engine nacelles, folding wings, and tail of the aircraft were all made by this company. Using data from sensors and sonar buoys, Sperry Univac Federal Systems created the onboard computers. A year later, eight prototypes of the Lockheed YS-3A variant were ordered when it was declared the winner. Designed for carrier-borne missions, the Viking was a traditional monoplane featuring a cantilever shoulder wing and a robust metal covering. It was supported by two parallel beams and featured two GETF-34 high-bypass turbofan engines, which provided exceptional fuel economy for storage and transit. The hydraulically folded wings the flight control system allowed for manual control in an emergency, and spoilers were installed on top and beneath the wings. Because the Viking featured an auxiliary power unit for unaided starts, it didn't need any ground support equipment. A later model of the APU offered complete electrical service, whereas the older model just supplied enough power for cooling and pneumatic starters. Three officers and one enlisted crewman made up the Vikings crew of four. It included a synchronized launch sequence with five-second intervals and group eject mode. The Viking was capable of doing in-flight refueling and long-duration flights. Since 85% of its propulsion came from blades rather than a jet engine, it was given the moniker War Hoover after the vacuum cleaner because of its distinctive sound. Between 1974 and 1978, 186 Viking aircraft were constructed during the Viking's production period. John Christensen piloted the S-3 aircraft's initial prototype in 1972 and it entered service in 1974 with an exceptional level of system integration. Each sensor system in the early versions had its own instruments and controls, which were later automated and combined into a single digital computer for all purposes. The multifunctional display of the S3 was almost identical to that of the Lockheed P3 or IAN, enabling crew members to confer with one another, allocate tasks effectively, and combine hints from each sensor. For fuel tanks, bombs, missiles, rockers, and storage, the Viking aircraft had two underwing hardpoints. It was equipped with four internal bomb base stations for nuclear, aerial torpedo, and bombs. The AL-39 electronic countermeasure system for 360-degree radar detection, 59 sonar buoys, and a search and rescue parachute were all part of it. The magnetic anomaly detector boom was retractable as well. The absence of air-to-air -air weapons made it difficult for the U.S. Navy's S-3 fleet, the A-3A, to protect itself. Artillery and anti-aircraft weapons posed the biggest threat. To confuse the enemy's fire control and missile guidance systems, chaff and flares were utilized. In 1974, the A-3A was assigned to NAS, 
North Island's Air Anti-Submarine Squadron 41. In 1980, a distinct Atlantic FRS supplanted the S-3 fleet. The remaining S-3As were converted into S-3Bs in 1987, with enhanced avionics, weaponry, and sensors. Inverse Synthetic Aperture Radar ISAR, fitted on the S-3B aircraft, allowed it to identify potential threats and, if necessary, unleash harpoons. For refueling, they might potentially have external gasoline tanks or buddy storage installed. Six were reclassified as U.S. 3A for specialist utility, while 16 S-3As were transformed into ES-3A shadows for carrier-based tasks. Cancelled carrier onboard delivery intentions for a tanker were the reason behind the KS-3A's cancellation. By the 1990s, the threat posed by submarines had decreased due to the disintegration of the Warsaw Pact and the fall of the Soviet Union. The emphasis switched to over-horizon targeting, sea surface search, aircraft refueling, and anti-surface warfare. The Navy reduced its size and abandoned its anti-submarine gear in favor of more adaptable, multipurpose aircraft. Of the 1,000 missions that Coalition Aircraft conducted in 1991 during Operation Desert Storm, 25% were from Navy ships. S-3Bs covered a lot of ground at this time. As they carried out a wide range of tasks and missions, the Vikings were crucial in the Gulf War. They diverted surface-to-air missiles with their decoy launches and performed roles as an attacker, tanker, electronic intelligence, and decoy launchers. After two years of testing, two squadrons of ADS-3A Shadows were sent to the VQ-5C Shadows in the Pacific Fleet and the VQ-5 Black Ravens in the Atlantic Fleet. The first ES-3A Shadows were supplied the same year. In order to provide organic indicators and warning support, the ES-3A mostly operated with carrier combat groups. Owing to its high flying hours and outstanding handling and range, the Viking was the tanker of choice for recovery missions. When equipment was replaced due to excessive use, judgments were made based on budget. During a Viking flight to the USS Abraham Lincoln in 2003, President George W. Bush gave a speech titled Mission Accomplished. The aircraft has been decommissioned and is on exhibit at the Florida-based National Museum of Naval Aviation. The lack of planning for a replacement resulted in the Viking aircraft being put into retirement. The Viking service life was extended by 11,000 flight hours thanks to a Lockheed Martin fatigue test, which made it possible for the Navy to retire every Viking by 2009. The outdated fleet was replaced by new fighters and multi-mission variants, and the S-3 was phased out of carrier service in 2009. Amid worries about the possible danger of new weaponry from the Chinese Navy, the U.S. Navy decommissioned three Vikings, one of which was sent to the Boneyard and the other to NASA. Given that the Chinese Navy is developing new missiles that may threaten carriers beyond their range, analysts contend that the Vikings should be brought back into service to cover holes in the carrier air wing. Reviving the S-3 might be a stopgap to safeguard aircraft carriers while new aircraft are being produced.